an AMPK activator called metformin, which hundreds of millions of people around the world already take for diabetes. Yeah, it was a, it's been used since the 1950s as the frontline medicine to bring down glucose levels in type 2 diabetics. And it, it's relatively safe as a drug goes. In half the world, it's available over the counter at pharmacies. Here in the US and uh, in Europe and UK, Australia, you need a prescription. We know that metformin works by activating AMPK. Do we know how that process kind of unveils itself? Well, there are a lot of theories, and it's been debated for over 50 years. Um, one thought is that the microbiome changes, but a leading school of thought that most scientists agree on is that it inactivates a protein complex called complex one, which is involved in making energy in mitochondria. And what it does is it lowers the amount of energy that the cell has in the form of ATP, this chemical that we use for energy. And then you get mitohormesis, mitochondrial hormesis, what doesn't kill the cell makes it stronger. And the reaction is twofold. One is to make more mitochondria, so you get more energy a few days later, but also by inhibiting mTOR, it'll improve what's called insulin signaling so that the blood sugar in, that's in your blood, and if you're a type 2 diabetic, it's too high, it gets sucked out of the bloodstream and utilized, which is why it's used to treat type 2 diabetes. And this is another one of those cases where um, there is uh, perceived adversity and then not just one of these pathways, but multiple pathways in this case are impacted. Yeah, uh, similarly to, to all of these factors which are talking to each other, this is a good example. Metformin will lower energy, inhibit mTOR. It will activate AMPK, obviously, we talked about, that's what it's mainly doing. But it also raises NAD levels, which, as we all know, will activate the sirtuins. So metformin is a remarkable molecule, comes from the plant world, it's very simple. The French hellebore or lilac plant produces what's called guanidines, and these have been known to treat diabetes for many years, in fact, over a century. And then chemists have put methyls on them, chemically modified it, so that it's more stable, and we call this metformin. And that's what we have the, as the drug today. And we've given this uh, drug to animals uh, and worms. It's extended lifespans, uh, 30 to 40 days, which is no small amount of extension for a worm. Yeah, I, I was involved in the mouse study with Rafael de Cabo down at the NIH, um, and we found that the mice were healthier and longer lived on metformin. And what are the other things? Because again, what we want to look for, if we want to know if metformin is working in humans like it works in animals, you know, we're not necessarily just going to look at the lifespan extension because that takes a long time. What are sort of the intermediary things that we're seeing with metformin? In humans, you mean? Uh, in Well, in animals and that we can look for in humans. Well, the main one, of course, is glucose lowering, but we also see more energy, more mitochondria, less inflammation. Um, and muscle switching, we haven't talked much about muscle type switching, but muscles, as you get older, become more glycolytic. They start to use more uh, anaerobic mechanisms. And you can see that switch back when you give them metformin, like they're more like an athlete. And we're seeing all of these things in animals and also in humans. Right. And this is where you can we can speak to a lot of data yeah. because millions of people have taken metformin. And one of the most interesting things about it is you can do a retrospective study of tens of thousands of elderly people on metformin and ask, okay, their type 2 diabetes may be reduced and, and slowed down, but what about other diseases that they're susceptible to? Cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's frailty? And the answer that's quite remarkable is that metformin lowers the risk of all those other diseases. So when we control for everything else, what we see is that the people who are on metformin are living longer than people who don't have type 2 diabetes. It's a, a remarkable fact. So now the question becomes, okay, take the type 2 diabetes part of the equation out. Will we still see an effect? And that is something that's being investigated in this uh, really large study that's underway, the TAME study. Yeah, you're right. The targeting of aging by metformin study run by Neil Barzilai down at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. This is a very large study over many different institutes and hospitals. It's costing tens of millions of dollars. It's taking a while to raise that money, but ultimately the goal is to show to the American FDA that you can target aging with a drug and slow it down. The ultimate goal being having aging a treatable medical condition. Why is it taking so long to raise money for this? Because this is really, I mean, everybody I know in the aging space is excited about this, and yet the money is hard to come by because... Well, this is where capitalism has a little bit of a downside, which is that uh, metformin is, is very cheap. It costs a few cents and it's off patent. 
So, which means anybody can make it. There's no profit motive for yeah. making this drug right now. Right. So Nir has relied on the government, and they've given half the money, and the rest of the half he's relying on donors, and he's still raising that money. But he's getting started. Fortunately, he's off to the races, and we should know in the next few years if he's seeing signs of slowing aging. And he's looking at a number of things,、uh, not just diseases, but also things like、uh, stability. Uh, ability to walk, strength, these kind of things, mental acuity. These are things that would indicate that aging itself is being slowed down. And he's even now able to measure the human biological clock with accuracy. And that should also be slowed down if this is truly an anti-aging medicine. We're seeing a lot of doctors get a lot more comfortable with the idea of prescribing metformin off-label.、Uh, just a few years ago,、uh, you know, the constraints of what metformin was actually approved for was keeping it out of the hands of a lot of people who thought that it might be good for them、uh, in their efforts to slow their aging. There's starting to be a little bit of a shift there. Well, yeah, I'm seeing a lot more people、uh, taking metformin under the approval with the approval of their physician. And part of it is education.、Uh, when, typically, when a, a doctor sees the evidence, and there's extensive literature,、um, and sometimes the patient takes the information to the doctor or our book,、uh, the doctor, in, in most cases, is convinced that this is worth the risk. Now, it's not risk-free. We should mention that metformin has some downsides.、Mm-hmm. Uh, one is that it can cause lactic acidosis, which is、uh, quite a severe condition.、It、can be fatal. So you have to be very careful there. But most people. Are fine on metformin. The the biggest thing that happens to them is that they have an upset stomach,、uh, lack of hunger,、um, which can actually be a good thing、uh, if you want to lose weight as well. But doctors now are saying, okay, they're, they're advising their patients as to these、uh, potential side effects, and also saying, yeah. Either because that doctor is、uh, sold on the idea that there's a potential aging benefit here or anti-aging be- benefit here. Or one of the other things you and I have talked about before is doctors are increasingly getting sick of waiting until patients are full blown sick to prescribe them medications, and they're prescribing it to pre-diabetic people and pre what we might call pre-pre-diabetic people. Well, there's a shift in in medicine and the way doctors are looking at their patients. More and more doctors are saying, "Okay, let's not wait till the patient is so sick that we have to treat them. Let's get ahead of that and let's start treating them earlier." The one other thing that people should talk to the doctors about if they're considering、uh, trying to get on metformin、uh, is the concerns about the connection between metformin and muscle loss. Right,、um, particularly in the elderly, this is an issue. But actually, if you look at the data, and there've been a couple of human studies, metformin doesn't make a big difference to muscle size.、Um, it probably makes a difference if you're trying to win Mr. Universe, but other than that. The difference is really slight. If you look at the graphs, it's only a five percent difference, and actually, five percent difference. I'll, I'll give up five percent body size for longevity any day. But the other important thing is that those muscles on metformin were just as strong as the others, and had less inflammation. So there's other benefits to that.